the joy of being a vegan clergyman, I think, is the joy of knowing that you are trying to spread the pure love of God in every respect. That, yes, we all have our blindnesses, we all have our shortcomings, nobody is perfect, but there is no large section of God's creation one's leaving out. There are two ways you can divide up the joys of being a vegan. I think the first is psychological, and the second is in physical well-being. In psychological or mental well-being, I would say, I am free to the burden of guilt of what I personally might do to the animal kingdom through my lifestyle choices. And that, for me, is the major, major winner. Now, the physical benefits are I am a lot slimmer than I was before. In fact, much slimmer than I was as a vegetarian. The other advantages are I have amazingly much lowered blood cholesterol and much lowered blood pressure. The first benefit I found was a sort of sense of inner peace, really, that I was no longer conflicted between what I'd come to recognise about the connectedness of all creation, God's love for the whole creation, and the way I was living my life. There was a sense of integration, of integrity really, in the sense that I was walking the walk now and not just talking the talk about God's care for creation. There is a freedom in, in not carrying a burden, in not feeling one is complicit with the violence that goes on behind closed doors, but nevertheless goes on, and if I pay for it, I'm complicit in it. And that helps me to be freer to be me. <laughs> That, that somehow I've laid down that part of my life, which I now believe was not God's intention for me, and so have been able to reflect on what it means to be more like Christ. I have a long way to go. But in that particular area, it was a revelation to me that this is not just a good thing to do, Terry. <laughs> This is your Christian responsibility. There's a sense of completion and a sense of doing and being where God wants me to be. Um, being a vegan is, is where God wants me to be. Um, having a vegan lifestyle is, is what God asks of, of, of me. And I can live my, my best um, through, through living um, uh, as a as a vegan and if I can offer my best then to the people around me. That, that sense of concern for other creatures it, I think nurtures uh, an empathy, nurtures a compassion for other creatures that helps you view the whole of life through different spectacles. Instead of just imagining God as a uh, a human being writ large, somehow distanced from, you know, living in the clouds or something. We start to see that um, we encounter the spirit through all creatures and through the created world. And it gives us a richer and more full sense of what we mean when we're talking about God. I think the wider veganism, awareness of veganism now means more people are aware that normal, non-judgmental, uh, reasonable people are also vegans. And I think that has helped and made it easier to be so in the church, yes. More and more people know about veganism, talk about veganism, are thinking about veganism, and that would be true because it's reflected in society, it would be reflected in this community, in this parish. And quite often people say, oh, Father, you're vegan, aren't you? And then they'll want to ask me something about it. Um, and I, I, I welcome that opportunity because 
that's where you get the chance to educate and to share. And, and I think when it comes from personal experience, it's all the more powerful. And I do sometimes have kind of like fake meat products, but I'm generally more kind of beans and tofu. And I think I've transitioned into that as, as the variety of these kind of meat-like products have, have grown. There's so much more choice. I think you can, I mean, years ago, it was kind of like Linda McCartney and, and that was that was your option really, or the ones that you could mix up the powder in a bowl and make your own little sausages with, which is actually quite nice. Um, but now I think you can be more discerning and think, well, actually, I like that brand, but I'm for that. Or I was talking to my brother the other day and we decided that one particular brand was really good for like, if you wanted to make a toad in the hole, the other would be much more if you wanted to have it with a sort of roast, as a roast dinnery kind of thing. So it's nice to have that choice. So for the person who's stepping out um, and wanting to kind of enter into the um, vegan world, my advice would be um, to let it be exploratory. Uh, you know, it doesn't need to be sort of an either or. Some of us are able to kind of, when we've made that decision to transition from being meat eaters to, to vegans sort of overnight. Um, that may not be the case for, for, for all individuals. Um, so I would say, you know, be, be kind of gentle um, and, and exploratory. I would say um, pray uh, about it, um, asking, you know, for, for, for guidance. The advice I would give to people who are thinking of doing it is, first of all, to read a bit to be sure of the motives and reasons for so doing. Often the reason is more of a gut feeling about it. That's fine, that's good. That's where most of us started. But you're going to be questioned, so you actually need to have some of the answers to those questions. I've got a few parishioners who have spoken to me and said, oh, I'm thinking about going a vegan. Going vegan, what do I need to do? And I think my advice would be to ask them what their motivation is and to help them um, develop a real sense of understanding that motivation and being able to talk about it so that their reasoning in their heads is clear for them. And then I could give lots of advice about what food to buy, where to buy it, what's good, what to avoid, all the usual things. And to say, give me a ring any time, it's a challenge, I'll come shopping with you. The advice I'd give to people considering veganism is that it's a transition and a change in your life. But it's a transition and a change that when you've made it, you'll be very glad. But it's not a transition and a change that's about success and failure. It's a transition and a change that's about taking small steps. And what you have to do if you want this is to begin the first step. The first step is always the most difficult, but it's the first step along the journey.